Well, hello, YouTube. Um, I just saw a portion of the PBD broadcast with uh, Ryan Garcia. And uh, something hit my brain because I've been real hard on him. Uh, and it made me immediately go back and assess his boxing and what's up with all of that. And I'm going to tell you guys a few points on it um, and my rethinking of him. Uh, that young man is the most up and down. Love him one minute, almost hate him the next. Boxer, well, he ain't one of the most. He's the most. You're up on him one minute, down on him the next. Boxer in the history of the game. Uh, there may have been more uh, extreme boxers, fighters. Uh, but we don't know about it because we didn't have social media and we didn't have cameras on our telephones and even telephones to go around with. So, uh, but as we know it in this modern computer age, uh, wow. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that type of trickery. However, with things that Joe has put to me as a team, uh, this helped this old man rethink some things. And I'm going to try to tell you, but you might not get it, uh, a few things about that situation, um, and a few things about Garcia from my perspective of what I see as a fighter, and uh, He has never won a fight uh, that I've seen in the professional ranks uh, with this great, wonderful technique. Um, he basically just stands there, rotates around you, steps forward or steps back, and throws a left. Either a Heck of a strong jab. Well, the jab's not even really that great. Uh, but boy, when he hooks that left, that's something special. And the speed with which he does that is amazing. Uh, the speed is creating the power in his case. And I've always, uh, always said, see, I got off a little off track here with him. I got mad at him for the Tank Davis fight. Yet I caught myself saying <clears throat> in a video the other day, well, you, uh, they need to get rid of all these uh, rehydration clauses and whatnot. And really they do. They really do. And uh, there's no excuses for Haney. Uh, Haney's a better technical boxer. Uh, he's a more learned uh, he's, he has a more learned ability to be vastly superior technically to somebody like Ryan Garcia. But it fits the mold of everything we do around here. Uh, which you don't see no more. You just literally don't see it anymore. 
and that is uh, crushing power, uh, physical strength with vastly superior strike striking strength punching strength uh, overcoming anything and the plan's been around for a long time it was successfully used in the 1920s 30s uh, things started getting more technical uh, towards the latter part of the 40s and into the 50s but we we know uh, through fighters like Sonny Liston that you can just come through and crush through everybody if you got the strength to do it so uh, Although I don't like the antics that were used, and I don't think he needed to use any antics. I don't think that won him anything. I think he went up there and got up in that squared circle and beat that boy up. That's it. It's no more, no less. Uh, to beat a great young man up, beat a great fighter up, and used power to do it. And that is where the amateur uh, boxing is vastly different than the professional boxing. And everybody today, everybody, uh, you, these guys that see they're new people to me, these trainers that y'all love and you think you got all this going on, uh, they're all basically doing the same thing. And they are teaching amateurish techniques and principles. And we are teaching uh, mayhem and destruction and uh, terrorizing you in the ring, the opponent. And uh, doing it through sheer power. I've sat and watched boys, this one boy that uh, Joe sparred uh, last week. The guy's way faster than Joe. The guy's way taller than Joe. The guy weighs a lot more than Joe. Uh, Joe, went, Joe actually went in there. Uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know the full of gist on it. Uh, Joe's been trimming down and slimming down. And uh, Joe went in there about uh, 172 pounds. It was, as a matter of fact, he was 172 pounds when he went in there. This kid was 100, 190 to 194 pounds. Uh, Joe's 5'9". This kid's almost 6'2". The kid's faster. But see, we got the advantage. The kid couldn't do nothing. He... Uh, and what we put up was just a selection of stuff. We, we're we not showing our wares. And that's another that I can respect Garcia for. Because he ain't showing anything. Y'all think he's showing stuff, but he's really not. You guys may think we're, and I'm not comparing ourselves to them. Because we're, we're totally on this end of the spectrum. And what Garcia and them do is over here on this side of the spectrum. It's just different is what I'm trying to say. But uh, uh, I got off point there. It's the fascinating thing about getting old. You can you can even forget things that are upsetting you, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Uh, it's an excellent thing. It's one thing I thank the Lord. Maybe I'm losing memory here because maybe there's some things He don't want me to be remembering. See. Things that'll help me get into heaven, see. But uh, I just keep doing a 360 with Ryan Garcia. But anyway, the power thing, all right? 
wasn't too much different than what we saw out of the other night, just in a uh, a decent thing. And I told Joe, I said, to be careful. This kid's, look, and he's hitting. He's been over here in this league boxing, and they have been teaching him some stuff, and some good stuff. And uh, he's been very successful over there. Uh, he's one of those guys, you can't touch him over there. He's that good. Uh, but what we're doing is different and uh, can neutralize the speed, can neutralize the technique. It can take everything that you've worked so hard at and all the things that you, your plans and your aspirations and your hopes and your, uh, everything that you've been so diligently working at practicing at and doing tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times, out the door, out the door. That's what we train to do, uh, to make all that go away. Um, Mike Tyson was really the first fighter uh, that started saying things like everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the face. Uh, the philosophy more broad is you take anybody and break them down. You go in at the beginning. Uh, usually I tell Joe, give the fella a stiff jab good stiff jab because it's one of the good things that he's got in his toolbox and most of the time from that first jab uh, whether it connects or whether it, if it connects anywhere you know if they if the punch is blocked if it hits an arm whatever uh, uh, these guys plans start changing uh, the confusion sets in, the chaos of a fight sets in, and they're lost. And uh, this can be done and achieved to any boxer uh, in the boxing game. Um, the why we don't see this happen more often is because trainers and coaches, however they would prefer to be called, uh, are not building these boxers' bodies properly. Wait, well, you look over there, this guy looks like he's built like a brick house. He might be built like a brick house, but he's not strong as a brick wall. He's not... It's not strong as a brick wall. It's like a brick with no bricks stacked on top of one another with no mortar between them to hold them together. Trust me, folks. I know what the hell I'm talking about. I, I truly do. Uh, we're not out here entering all these, although I believe over the summer, uh, my daughter's living uh, in a suburb out just outside of New York City. So I think Joe's going to take and spend uh, a good amount of time with his sister uh, in New York. And he'll be able to go right up there to the city daily and get around some uh, uh, some highly professional guys and uh, some guys that can tax him, some guys that can push him. And uh, so we're hoping for that to happen, but I have no intention of uh, 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 Olympics any longer or anything like that. I sat down, you know, as soon as Joe heard, well, it started with Joe that you know, what he was going to do was uh, represent, he would have represented at 19 years old, 
the United States Olympic team. You know, of course, if he made it, right? Uh, which I see he would he would make he would make it now. At the way he's setting that now, he could be on that team now, but probably wouldn't wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be on the team because they're going to choose a loser. And that's the problem. But started with him seeing all these baking, uh, baking, cooking videos, uh, pastries, cakes, puddings, brownies, and stuff on the uh, the uh, Boxing USA, uh, the social media. And then it went from there to their allowing transsexuals to come in uh, and compete. And when Joe was like, no. And I was like, yeah, you're good. I'm glad you feel that way, son, because I wouldn't want to be a part of that either. And uh, he's been raised not to accept that in his immediate vicinity and in his life. And I often tell people, go do what you like, go do what you choose to do, but don't force it on our lives. All you ever hear is when, you know, a, a good upstanding person uh, with good moral character, and the first, first time you say you're a Christian, you're imposing on their lives and trying to control them. Uh, but when actually the reverse is going on, all the bad and the evil and the perversion is trying to control the good people. And that's exactly what's going on. So we, those, those, that's not even on the table. It could be back on the table at some point. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a fortune teller, but he's not uh, pushing for that. And uh, we have no need to. Uh, we have no need to politic. We have no need to uh, be and act a certain way. Uh, we have no need to do this thing over here to be able to get in over here. Uh, Y'all can't see what we're doing. And you, and if you could see it on the other end of this screen, you would, you, you really still wouldn't see it. Uh, we don't need all that. It's not necessary. Uh, when you're the best, and and you're the, you're the best, fifteen year old, the strongest, the most dominating, uh, with certainly the most knockout power, uh, as a fifteen year old, more than likely in all of the world, uh, you don't need to go down the path that everybody else is going down. You just don't need to go down that path. Uh, you know, when you've already seen from when a boy's 13 years old, uh, when he's hitting somebody, he's making a way different sound when he connects than a, a 28-year-old, 240-pound uh, heavyweight is making and the thing is uh, half you trainers out there would work your butt off to the bone not realizing you'd be taking your power from him. you know you want to technique him all up to where uh, when the availability to perform with his strength would be taken from it and we're not falling into that we're we're marching to the beat of a different drum so all of that roundabout that i just said can relate to ryan garcia in this way love or hate him he's marching to the beat of a different drum because he can it's as simple as that Because he can. Uh, I, the punching bag skunk, I love 
ghetto Greg Towns. Hey, boy, he says it like it is. And 99.5% of the time, I'm right on board with him. Now, he's, he's not as old as me, but he's getting older, and he's a very expen experienced, knows more in his little pinky nail than I do in my whole body about boxing. Uh, uh, but I, I typically agree with him all the time. This has created a lot of everybody wanting to look at it. Uh, and for an example, I mentioned uh, Greg as, a, as something here because he put a video out and he's trying to tell the brothers, the, the black population in the U.S., where are you guys at? Your asses should be over here on Haney's side. But yet, you're a lot of you got you, a lot of the black guys are just really bashing Haney. And he's right. Back in the day, that wouldn't be that way. Uh, the black community would sail around their fighter whether he won or he lost. And but they certainly wouldn't be uh, bad mouthing the guy. They'd say, get a rematch, get built up, go back at it, or whatever, you know, change, you know, different weight class, whatever. It, uh, uh, or, you know, if the black, if the black fighter retired and went off into the sunset after a defeat, the black community would say, he's still the greatest. He would have whipped him a year earlier. You know, it was things like that, and and how people are feeling that. That, that that there's race going on, uh, they they can't say who they like, right? And uh, I want to tell you all right now, I like Haney, I like him, that young man a lot, and uh, I like Bill Haney, his daddy, a whole lot, uh, and. Uh, and I like Garcia a whole lot, and I like his daddy a whole lot. I, you know, they had me completely fooled. I was like, uh, you know, where's Garcia's daddy at? Where's where's he at? That sorry, no good rascal. Where's he at? And they were all in on it. And he said at the beginning, he said, "Don't listen to my son. This is, you know, we're putting on a show. It's what we do." And uh, most of us didn't <laughs> didn't believe that, now did we? So he did a great job at how he went about it. A lot of things that he said and things I don't like, but mad respect to that guy. And uh, uh, Joe loves him to death. And uh, Joe's, uh, here's the deal with us. Uh, if Joe ends up fighting at under 200 pounds. Uh, he's still growing, so I don't know about all that. But if he uh, if he's fighting at under 200 pounds, if Garcia keeps getting bigger, which I'm sure he will, he's got some height on him. Uh, he could be like James Tony and go all the way up to heavyweight or something. You, know, you just never know. But Joe's like. I want to fight him. I want to fight him. And, you know, if Joe continues on himself. And if it were to work out, they'd get it a same weight somewhere. And if Joe's good enough and it may be uh, advantageous to Ryan Garcia to fight Joe four years from now, five years from now, six years from now, well, six years from now to be pushing it a little bit, but uh, who knows? You know, Joe would love it. I know that. So uh, anyway, I've babbled on along. Uh, it's amazing. I sit and tell you guys uh, all the time that don't believe anything you see or you hear. Just go by the Bible. And make sure you've got an older translation of the Bible. If anything's been translated after 1910, uh, 
get out of it and get to a King James Bible or one of the older translations older than that. But, because uh, that's where you're going to get truth. And we scientifically know you're going to get truth that way. Uh, but, and then for me to go over here and be fall in hook, line, and sinker and believe the con job that Ryan Garcia pulled on all of us. Uh, I was like, well, he messed a lot of people up with betting. You know what? We don't need to be betting anyway. Gambling's not a good thing. Uh, I've gambled before. I've typically thanked the good Lord with my addictive personality. Uh, I've gambled and won the, uh, the vast majority of the time when I've gambled. And uh, I uh, went into a casino about two or three months ago. I had my wife with me. I said, I'm just, come on, let's go in here. And I played some uh, video poker and roulette, and I won there. But, but see, I know when to stop. And how I know when to stop is beyond me. Uh, and, I, and I've done good when I've betted on... Uh, on fights and uh, ball games and things like that, but I'm not a regular better. I don't get in on things like that, and uh, betting's not a good thing. And you know, if you get fooled, uh, it's the name of the game. <laughs> That's why it's called a bet. So, you know, I was thinking, oh well, he shouldn't. Uh, uh, you know, this stuff about. Uh, uh, you know, him fooling the, the people that are betting and stuff. And I was getting mad about that. And I, then I caught myself and I'm like, why are you getting mad about that? You go out here betting, you need to know what you're doing. And you need to realize that you can be fooled 100% of the time. And uh, so... It was a piece of me, but originally before the crazy started, this is the thing. You go back and look in the videos. Originally, when they first set for the fight to happen, I said, Garcia's going to take him inside of nine or ten rounds. Uh, and I thought it was going to be a knockout. And I said, if it goes to a decision, Garcia's going to win it. And lo and behold, look what happened. See, so... Uh, I always, and this is probably you too, listen to the first intuition that you're having that discussion up here or in here about. Listen to that first intuition. It is when man gets involved and starts having their go-rounds with things that the confusion sets in and things go awry which is our fighting style. Uh, we always go in the hopes that if you come in the ring, our man's going to, through power, is going to knock you off your, your plan and uh, all the tactical stuff in your toolbox. You're not going to know what tools to grab and, and bring chaos and confusion upon you. And that's life in general. Uh, so go with the first intentions. Don't uh, if you get bashed, don't 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 let that drag you off your game plan and get you going over here to get back over here to victory. You stick with the plan, and that's my advice to everybody. So rambled on enough. Hadn't put a rambling video out in quite a while. Figured I'd put one out. We're shadow banned anyway, so. But the wonderful thing about it is if you got this far in this video, that means you are really a good friend of mine and I appreciate you and I love you. And uh, that, that might not mean much to you, but it's the best gift I can give and I would give it to you that you'd think enough of uh, listening to a rambling old man ramble on. 
God's blessings and may my king be on your side, folks. Have a good week.